These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. So perhaps we'll start with hydrogenation. Does that sound okay? Okay. So um, first of all, uh, what type of functional group is this? An alkene. Yeah, an alkene. It's always good to learn the names of each new functional group. Uh, a double bond between two carbons is an alkene. All right, and just for this example, I'm going to put in deuteriums here. So capital D is deuterium and isotope uh, hydrogen. So what are the reagents we need um, for hydrogenation? Well, basically we need molecular hydrogen and a metal catalyst. Uh, and uh, uh, a common metal catalyst would be palladium on carbon. You might have seen some other catalysts, but the key thing is a, uh, a metal catalyst, oftentimes like this. The reaction, um, you must show the catalyst. The reaction doesn't work without the catalyst. You always have to show that metal catalyst. That this should be a full credit catalyst right here, so you can just stick with this. This just means palladium on carbon. Okay, um, well as usual, it's important to go through uh, the mechanisms, because if we understand the mechanism, we understand the reaction. So what's the role of the palladium? The role of the palladium is to provide a surface. Um, so the palladium is going to give us a surface, so I'll draw this as, say, the surface of palladium. And then what happens is that the two hydrogen atoms in the molecular hydrogen end up separately attached to the palladium surface. So the surface gives us a way of stabilizing these two hydrogen atoms separately. Okay, and then these are going to react with this molecule over here. Well, for example, go like this, uh, and then the double bond can uh, attack one of the hydrogens. So this arrow, this is an arrow indicating that the electrons in this pi bond are uh, attacking this hydrogen over here. And that the, uh, the hydrogen here just leaves its electrons behind in the metal, so we don't care about that. Uh, but that is going to leave an opening on this carbon over here. Well, this hydrogen can come in and put its electrons there. Maybe I won't bother showing the uh, pairs of electrons. That's actually going to confuse us more than it's worth here. Okay. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is notice that I've drawn this as a concerted reaction. And that is correct. This is a concerted, simultaneous reaction. So the two hydrogens add at the same time. Two hydrogens add at the same time. That pretty much just has to be memorized. Okay, and now I'm going to draw the product from that. Uh, well, here's the two carbons that we used to have uh, in the middle over here. And I'm going to draw... Here's the hydrogen that attacked on the left. And here's the hydrogen that attacked on the right. Okay, I can see here from my notes, I actually oversimplified this mechanism uh, a little bit. Uh, it's a little less concerted than I said, uh, but this is good enough for this course. This will be good enough to get you the right answer. So we'll, we'll take a little bit of a simplification and say that the mechanism looks like this. This will be good enough to get us the right answer. Uh, now here's the important point. This hydrogen came in on the left. Um, well, that's going to push the deuterium down. So I'll push that deuterium down over there. Um, maybe the best way to uh, have drawn this here is... We don't usually draw double bonds. We don't usually draw double bonds with dashes and wedges because they're trigonal planar. Uh, but we can still have it as trigonal planar. So, 
So this is flat. So it could be flat like my hand is flat here, but it could be flat like my hand is flat here. So if we turn it like this, then the substituents will be pointing out of the board and into the board. Well, that's a little bit better for drawing the mechanism because then we can show the hydrogens coming in from above. Well, notice that when we do that, the deuterium should still be pointing down. Uh, I'm sorry, the deuterium should still be pointing into the page, but now it's pointing down. And this methyl group should still be pointing out of the page, but now it's pointing down as well. Okay, now let's do the same thing at this carbon. Well, now, here's the key idea. Which side is this hydrogen going to come in from, above or below? Above. Because it's, came in, it's coming from this same scrap of palladium that the first one did. That's the key idea. Both hydrogens are coming in from the same speck of palladium. Since they're coming in from the same speck of palladium, they come in from the same direction. Do you remember if that's called sin or anti? Sin. Sin. Okay, that's the first time we've really had to use those terms in this course. So for the whole next couple of weeks, you're going to be seeing lots of different people who attack double bonds. And every time you attack the double bond, you have to have two attackers. One that attacks the left-hand carbon and one that attacks the right-hand carbon. Well, they can always either come in from the same direction or opposite directions. Um, and if it's the same direction, it's sin. How do you know which direction they're coming in from when you look at the mechanism? In this mechanism, both hydrogens were attached to the same speck of palladium, so they're both coming in from the same direction. So should I draw the hydrogen here up or down? Okay, and then what happens to these two? Well, they get pushed down again as well. The deuterium should still be pointing away from us, but now it's away from us and down. And the methyl group should still be pointing towards us, but now it's towards us, uh, towards us and down. So this would give us uh, our final product over here. Now, uh, what's the name of this type of reaction? Uh, we've learned that an elimination reaction is a reaction that forms a pi bond. What do we call a reaction that gets rid of a pi bond? It's not elimination, it's not substitution. What's that new type of reaction that you're just now learning about? I don't know if you've picked up that term. Hydrogenation. Now, this is a hydrogenation, but what type of hydrogenation is it? Or um, what, what type of mechanism is this? This is what we call an addition reaction. An addition reaction is a reaction that turns a uh, that uh, removes a pi bond. Let's actually write down those terms. An addition reaction involves removal of a pi bond, and elimination involves forming a pi bond. Those are important terms to have in your notes and to really memorize. Okay, now you can see these terms are a little bit counterintuitive because addition actually means, means eliminating a pi bond. And elimination it means adding a pi bond. So how did the terms get so messed up? Well, how do we remove a pi bond? We do it by adding two atoms. So what, what's getting added here is not the pi bond. What's keeping at, what we're adding two atoms to remove the pi bond. And by the same token, if we could somehow reverse this reaction, we can. But if we could somehow reverse it, the way we would form the way we would form that pi bond is by eliminating these two hydrogens. So elimination forms a pi bond, but it does that by eliminating an atom from each of uh, each of the connecting carbons. Okay. Uh, so anyway, uh, these might be somewhat counterintuitive, but they're important to memorize. So you're going to be going over a whole bunch of addition reactions for the next few weeks. Many many addition reactions to alkenes many, many reactions that remove the pi bond from an alkene and turn it into an alkane. So this is just one addition. So hydrogenation is one type of addition. This is a hydrogenation reaction. That's a very intuitive name because we're adding hydrogen, but it's just one of the many types of addition that we'll see. Okay, so we've seen this uh, addition. Now, is this a stereocenter? Uh, yes. Yeah, is this a stereocenter? Yes. That's why we had to be so careful about the position of everybody when the hydrogens were coming in. Stereocenters. We wouldn't really bother about the uh, geometry if we were doing an addition on uh, um, ethene over here, um, because uh, ethylene over here, because they're not going to form stereocenters. But if you are forming stereocenters, you have to be very careful about uh, the stereochemistry. Now, um, would we predict here a maximum of one product or a maximum of two products? I don't know if you were around when we talked about. Remember, what's the general rule that allows us to predict 
when do we get a maximum of one stereoisomer and when do we get a maximum of two stereoisomers? When it's trigonal planar, you can have two because I'm talking the front or the back. Right. When it's tetrahedral, you can only talk on one side. And so you get a maximum of one. Okay, that's good that you remember that. That's a good principle for the whole course. So we've already seen that if you're attacking something that is tetrahedral, you get a maximum of one stereoisomer as a product. But just as you said, if you attack someone that's trigonal planar, you get a maximum of two stereoisomers.